Okay, let's talk about how to factor polynomials. And if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you definitely have to know how to factor polynomials. And this is a pretty big topic, so we're going to break this up into multiple different lessons. And our first lesson is going to be about the GCF, and that means the greatest common factor. Okay, so uh, when you're learning how to factor polynomials, you have to first learn how to uh, factor out uh, the greatest common factor. And I'm going to get into all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, I've been teaching math for decades, and I've come to this major belief. And that is all students can be successful in math, but it requires two things. One, the student themselves has to be willing to do the work. So you got to be willing to study do the homework, take notes, you know, et cetera. Okay, but beyond that, uh, what students need is uh, clear and understandable instruction, and that's where I can help you out. So if you are at the middle school, high school, or even college level, and you need assistance in mathematics, I can definitely help you out. And uh, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the SAT, ACT, GED, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can help you out. And also, if you homeschool, I have fantastic homeschool uh, courses for middle and high school mathematics. And if you need some notes, I'm going to leave uh, links to uh, some math notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into how to factor polynomials. We're going to, um, of course, break up this major um, topic, a major skill uh, in algebra into uh, several different lessons. And we're going to start off with this first lesson. Uh, about the greatest common factor. And actually, this is an example of what we're going to be doing. So if I told you to factor 4x plus 10, well, you can uh, write this uh, this way, okay? And in this particular example, 2 is the greatest common factor, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, first just give ourselves a good little roadmap uh, for those of you that are algebra students on what you're going to learn when it comes to factoring. Okay, because factoring is a huge topic in mathematics. But let's just define real quick what factoring is, even before I give you this little thing here, right? So let's say I have the number 10, okay? So if I said factor 10, how could what does that mean? All right, so some of you are out there, oh, well, yeah, let's, uh, let's just, you know, answer these basic uh, words because I'm, you know, I'm assuming that you know what this means, what factors are, but let's review this. So 10 is what? Well, we can write 10 as 2 times 5, okay? So 2 times 5, for example, is 10. So factors are these things. So 2 and 5 are factors of 10, okay? So um, when we talk about factoring, we're talking about taking numbers and writing them as the product of other numbers, and those other numbers are called factors. So 10 is uh, equal to 1 times 2 times 5, and here we can't go anymore. There's no more. Uh, there's no other numbers that we can write such that we multiply them together to get back to 10. So these right here we, we would call uh, prime factors. Okay. So those what these are. This is what we're talking about factors. But this these are factors of numbers. Okay. What we're trying to do is to take a polynomial and break it up into several factors. So that's the whole objective here when we're talking about factoring in algebra. So let's go ahead and take a look at this quick roadmap. And uh, the first thing you need to know is how to factor the greatest common factor. And that's what this lesson is going to be about. Of course, I've done future lessons or I've done other videos, but I'm going to kind of redo a lot of these videos. Um, we'll, we'll break them up in different lessons. So our first lesson is going to be on the greatest common factor. So now, once you understand how to factor the greatest common factor, you move on to factoring trinomials, things like this, 2x squared minus uh, 10x plus, let's say, 9, okay? Now, this may or may not be factorable, but we uh, want to try to factor uh, trinomials in algebra. And if you can't factor them, they basically fall into two categories, um, a case one and a case two situation. Um, again, I'm going to get into this in uh, future videos, but uh, this is a sub-skill of factoring, okay? Uh, greatest common factoring is one skill. Trinomials is a whole other category of factoring. And then that brings us on to another thing that you need to know about factoring, and that is special rules. Things like the difference of two squared, like a squared minus b squared, is equal to a plus b times a minus b. 
there's a lot of these special rules that you have to learn uh, that help us factor in algebra. And then lastly, you learn more advanced techniques like group factoring. So again, lots to learn when it comes to factoring, but without a doubt, if you're going to be successful in algebra, you must know how to factor. If you don't know how to factor, you will not be able to pass algebra. Yes, I said it, you will not be able to pass, okay, uh, because there's, factoring is just involved in everything in algebra. So if there's one skill that you really would need to get down, that is factoring. Okay, so again, I wanted to give you a general roadmap about um, all the things you need to learn about factoring, but we're going to just focus on our first skill here, and that is uh, dealing with the greatest common factor. So let's get to it now. Okay, so the GCF, um, we're talking about the greatest common factor. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what that means here in a second, but, but before you learn how to factor, you need to learn how to multiply polynomials. So for example, here's 10, right? Uh, uh, 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. So before we can factor, we need to know how to multiply. So we, we first have to understand that 2 times 5 is 10. Same thing in uh, algebra uh, when we're dealing with polynomials. Before you can factor polynomials, you need to know how to multiply polynomials. So let's take a look at this problem right here. Okay, If I said multiply 2 times x plus 3, how do I do that problem? Well, hopefully you already know how to do that. If you don't, well, the deal here uh, is you need to use uh, the distributor property. So this is 2 times x, which is 2x, and then we take this 2 and multiply it by that 3, and that, of course, is 6. So uh, 2 times x plus 3 is equal to 2x plus 6. Again, this is the distributive property. So if you um, have any difficulty with uh, the distributor property or multiplying polynomials, make sure you work on that because uh, you're not going to understand. You're going to have difficulty, let's say, um, uh, factoring polynomials if you don't know how to multiply polynomials. And when we first, uh, when we start learning about multiplication, you have to learn about the distributive property. Okay, so this is uh, the distributive property. Now, here's the deal. What the cool thing is, if you know the distributive property. When we're factoring out the greatest common factor, it's basically like the reverse of the distributive property. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. So this problem right here, our first problem is uh, the directions would be multiply 2 times x plus 3, and here is the answer. Okay, so this is the answer to that question. Now, this second question would be factor, okay? So here I have 2x plus 6. I'm saying factor this polynomial, okay? Now, here's the deal. Uh, sometimes you can't factor. So if I said factor 10, you would be, oh, that's 2 times 5. If I said factor 17, you would be like, mm, there is no factors other than 1 and 17. So that would be what we call a, pr a prime number, right? Same um, idea when it comes to polynomials. Sometimes you just simply can't factor a polynomial, but if you can factor a polynomial, then we want to you know, be able to do so. So here, the directions would be factor this polynomial if possible. So the first thing you're going to be thinking is the greatest common factor, and the GCF is the reverse. Okay, Finding the GCF is effectively the reverse of doing the, uh, the distributive property. Okay, So here, the answer is, oh, okay, I can rewrite uh, 2x plus 6 as um, in terms of factors, i.e. two or more things being multiplied together. So I, I'm thinking to myself, if I undid this using the distributive property, I'm thinking about this problem here, I can write this as 2 times x plus 3. And then 2, this is a factor, and x plus 3 is a, another factor, because I multiply these together, I get back to this. Okay, So you know, first of all, before we do, you know, any more problems, let's just make sure we understand what the directions mean and what the answers mean. So here, uh, if I asked you to factor something like this, the answer would be the factors, okay? All right, so now let's get into how we find uh, the GCF, okay? So again, the GCF stands for what? The greatest common factor, all right, so we know what a factor is. Now we need to think about these other uh, letters here, common and uh, greatest, okay? So let's take a look at 
4y plus 10, and let's suppose we want to factor out the GCF. So the first thing is, let's look at the factors of both 4y and 10. So 4y, the factors of 4y or is uh, 2 times 2 times y. Now, 1 is always a factor of any, everything, so I'm not going to write 1, uh, but just know that 1 is uh, always there. Okay, I could technically write 1, and maybe I should. Uh, we can write it in there, but just to kind of keep it a little bit more focused on these other factors, I'll leave the 1 out. But just so you know, 1 is always a factor of all numbers. Okay, so 4y, we can write as 2 times 2 times y, and then 10, we can write as 2 times 5. Okay, so we're looking at the individual factors of these terms. So now let's go and look at this uh, greatest common factor. So let's start with this C letter here, common, okay? So what factors do does 4y and 10 have in common? Well, let's look. We got a 2 here, a 2 here, and a y here. And then we have a 2 and a 5. So the only thing they have in common is a 2, okay? So... Uh, let's go in and circle what they have in common. And do they have anything else in common? Well, they have a 1 in common as, as well, right? Because I have a 1 here and a 1 here. But it looks like the only thing they have in common is 2. These are common factors. And uh, now we have to ask ourselves, are, these the, are, are they the greatest common factor? And it is, right? There's no other factors. So 2 is the greatest common factor. So the way you um, uh, factor out the GCF, you do it this way, okay? It's always gonna be the GCF times whatever is remaining, okay? So your GCF is gonna be on the outside. So here, uh, I wanna re I'm gonna factor 4y plus 10. So two here is my GCF, okay? Now, but what remains? Well, what remains is the following. Uh, what I didn't factor out. So 2y goes right there. That's what remains in this first term. And then 5 remains in this second term right there. Okay, so here, 4y plus 10 is equal to 2 times 2y plus 5. Okay, again, 2 is the greatest common factor. And, but this right here, this 2y plus 5 is also a factor of 4y plus 10. Okay, so I'm going really nice and slow. And um, just to be sure about this, we, we have to ask ourselves, all right, if I was to use the distributor property 2 times 2y, would I get back to this? Well, 2 times 2y is 4y, and then 2 times that 5 is 10. Okay, so again, you can always check your work, uh, but you got to know that distributor property. All right, so this is how we find the GCF. Okay, so again, you list out the factors, you look for the uh, greatest common factors, and that is going to be your GCF. And then it's going to be multiplied by these parentheses. Always think, again, in the reverse of the distributor property. Okay, so let's do a few practice problems. Again, this is like a little mini lesson on the GCF. But uh, let's see if we can apply what we learned to these two polynomials. So here I have 8m minus 6, and then here I have something that's a little bit more challenging, but uh, it's the same concept, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, first uh, take a look at the individual factors. If you want to uh, pause the video and do these real quick, I think that is an excellent uh, approach. All right, so 8m. So what are the factors of 8m? Well, you can write uh, 8 as 4 times 2. Uh, 1 times 2, you can write it as 2 times 2 times 2 as well. Let's just write it as 4 times 2 times m. So these are factors of m because I'm looking at the factors of 6. Okay, so I'm thinking, well, 2 times 3. So what do we have in terms of common factors? Well, they have a 2 in common. So that's going to be my GCF. That's 2. And what remains in this first term? 4m. Okay. This is a subtraction problem, so I could put a minus sign right there, and then I have a 3 remaining over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this work. So 2 times uh, 4m, that is 8m minus 2 times this 3 would be 6. So that checks out. So 2 is the greatest common factor, but both of these are factors, but the 2 is um, technically the greatest common factor. Okay, and by the way, too, I want to say that there's a lot of different varieties of practicing uh, 
um, finding the GCF. These are some really basic prompts. So you got to uh, follow through and practice this with additional prompts. Uh, I'm going to give you some suggestions. I would definitely encourage you to check out any one of my algebra courses. I really get heavy duty into all of this stuff, and, uh, and I do a lot more practice prompts. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the second prom. And the GCF doesn't have to only apply to two terms, something basic like this. We can apply to a trinomial like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the factors of each one of these terms. So 10x squared. So this would be uh, 2 times 5 times x times x. Okay, so this is 10x squared. We can write it that way. Then 4x, I can write as 2 times 2 times x. And then 2 is this going to be 2 times 1. Remember, 1 is always a factor of uh, everything. But So here, just to be very explicit about it, we'll write a 1 in like that. Okay, so what is the common factor? The only thing they have in common is a 2 here, 1, 2 here, and another 2 here. So that is going to be our GCF. So our GCF will be 2. And then our first uh, term, remember, we have three terms here. So I'm going to have to write 1, 2, and 3 things there. So what's remaining? Well, we have a 5 times x times x, so that would be 5x squared. This is an addition uh, sign right there, so we'll put a plus, and then we have a 2x remaining right there, and then we just have a 1. Okay, this is going to be separated by plus, plus 1 right there. And, of course, we can always check our work by using the distributor property. 2 times 5x squared, does that get me back to 10x squared? It does. 2 times 2x is getting me back to 4x. It does. And then 2 times 1, that gets me back to 2. So this checks out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, call it a wrap at this point. Just remember, uh, this is a basic introduction to uh, factoring and the greatest common factor. You have to do a variety of prompts here to really master this. But I wanted to go nice and slow so you can really get a good feel for what the GCF is. Okay, but there's definitely... a um, um, a, uh, a lot of different variety of prompts that you have to practice. But don't move forward um, in, uh, when you're trying to learn how to factor polynomials until you've mastered the GCF. Okay, And again, if you're struggling with this, go back and double check your um, ability to use uh, the distributor property. Okay, go, But go back and look into polynomial multiplication. All right, but uh, if this little video helps you out in some way, then consider helping me out by smashing that like button and maybe even uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. Um, again, I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus uh, math videos from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all my videos. I make them for you, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.